Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Bobby here. Happy Friday. Happy Good Friday. I want to first start off by saying I thank Jesus for the sacrifice he made for me, for all of us, for my sins. Uh, I thank God for all he's brought me through these last, these last several years, but in my life in general. And I thank him for what he's about to do in my life in terms of being a motivator. Uh, all that said, I want to get to some practical advice today. All right, so... A good friend of mine, David, one of my boot campers and friend, brought me over some of this scrumptious sweet bread, Portuguese sweet bread. This stuff is the bomb. I'm about to, I'm about to put it in the oven, heat it up, put lots and lots of butter on it, right? So that's obviously all carbs, right? You guys know me. I don't really preach anti-carbs. I don't preach anti-anything. I preach being smart, I preach being practical, right? So I intermittent fast, I do a BTY fast. You guys know that, you guys should know that by now. I don't eat between 10 p.m. and 3 p.m. So at 10 p.m. or so, I stop eating. Uh, I wake up in the morning, I take my ketones supplement, which I sell uh, to prove it. Uh, I take my amino acids and some creatine right now around my workouts. And then when I get home, about three, about 3 p.m. or so, after doing all my parenting Uber duties, uh, I usually eat something that, that may or may not contain carbs, all right? Uh, I try to be balanced, right? I try, I try to minimize uh, the filling up of my G tank, right? The G tank is the aggregate of our bloodstream glucose and our stored glucose, right? I call it the G tank. So I do try to minimize that during the week so that when I work out, I can knock it all the way down to zero and put my body into a fat burning mode regularly, right? So, but occasionally, mm, I'm confronted with a dilemma, right? Carbs, all carbs. So one thing I do when I'm either craving a carb of choice, pasta, bread, cereal, I love cereal. Uh, one thing I do is I, be, I, I, I try to be smart about it, right? So a lot of what we do in terms of our uh, fitness strategy, we don't really know why we're doing it. We have no real plan uh, in terms of timing. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble. Hold on. Close that cabinet. Man, my wife would be mad at me if I show the kitchen like that. Um... So we don't really have, we don't understand why we do some things. We, don't, we, we do resistance training because they say we should. We, we don't eat past eight because somebody said we should. We watch our carbs, whatever that means. We take protein. But we don't know why we're doing these things or why or what our body does in response to these tools that we give it. And they're all tools, right? right? They're all tools in our strategy, right? So when we begin to understand and know exactly what happens to our body when we do certain things and how that pertains and how that relates and how that impacts the changes we want in our body composition, then we can do these things with an understanding of what's going to happen, right? So it's a Friday. Usually on a Friday, I've, I've got my G tank levels down quite a bit, right? Going into the weekend. I like to go into the weekend with my G tank, my, my stored glucose in my body low enough to enjoy the weekend, right? Because the last thing we want is to be in a situation where we're having, we're eating carbs that our body can't use and it can't store because we have excess or already uh, stored glycogen at, at or near capacity to store it. So we don't wanna go into a weekend uh, especially now in the summertime, with our, our G tank levels high already, right? So that's why I recommend during the week, be aggressive with your workouts, be aggressive with uh, watching your carbohydrate intake. intake. Um, you know, I, I highly suggest you guys move toward a strategy of a smaller eating window permanently, like I do. Uh, that helps a lot. Right, going from you know a 17-hour eating window, which many of you guys do now, to a seven-hour eating window, will, will will have huge benefits. 
right? So my eating window is about seven hours, eight hours, between 3 p.m. and about 10 p.m. most days. So because of that, I don't eat as much. And so my body doesn't have the ability or time to build up these, these glycogen stores to the point where my body is in jeopardy of fat storage, all right? So back to my story. So now, so on a Friday, I'm typically lower in my G tank. So I can eat some carbs without any risk of fat storage. I might gain weight, but it's all stored glycogen and water that's used to store glycogen. Okay, so when I come home, actually last night, my friend David texted me and said, look, I got some, a, a surprise for you, right? This Easter sweet bread, right? So I couldn't eat last night because I didn't plan for it. It was late. You know, I was at my son's practice. I got home late. So I didn't have it last night, but today I planned for it. I did a, a big uh, circuit workout that had cardiovascular and resistance, which I love to do. Makes your body... Uh, work 10 times harder than it would with just cardio or just weights. Um, I fasted as usual, right? Ketones in the morning, amino acids, and some creatine uh, for the workout. And then I came home. Hey, Prof. So now I'm here and I'm confronted with this all carbs meal. So what do you do, right? We all have cravings. These guys who pretend they don't have cravings are lying to you. So Rather than pretend I'm not going to eat this, I'm smart about it. So what I do when I'm going to a party or I want something that's, that's going to be higher percentage-wise in carbs than I want, what I'll do is, is I'll do a preemptive strike, if, if you will. I will have protein, a protein shake, before I have the pasta or the rice or this big-ass thing of bread. I'm telling you, I'm going to mess this bread up. I'm going to put it in the oven. I'm going to slice it up, put it in the oven, get it nice and warm, put some butter on it. I'm going to kill it, right? But that's all carbs. So what happens, if I do that now, what's going to happen is this. When you have a meal that is mostly carbohydrates or largely carbohydrates, your body responds with an insulin, insulin response, Right, your pancreas recognizes a large, your brain actually, your body recognizes a large uptick in blood sugar. Right, your body eats the carbohydrates, it breaks down carbohydrates into glucose in the bloodstream. That means if it's a lot of carbs, there's a lot of blood sugar in your blood. So now your body reacts thinking, thinking you're gonna die and your pancreas will secrete insulin. Insulin's job is to get rid of that blood sugar, right? So now your body shuttles that blood sugar out of the bloodstream into storage, right? Liver and muscles are the primary areas of storage, right? So if you eat a big meal that's, that's predominantly carbohydrates, your body reacts quickly to that and, and shuttles all that blood sugar out of the bloodstream. So if I eat this, this bread right now, I'm going to be on my couch watching the NBA playoffs, feeling good. My body's going to react and get rid of all that blood sugar. What that means is there's going to, there's going to be a drop in my blood sugar shortly after that uptick in my blood sugar. So now, in a half an hour or an hour or so, my body's going to think that it needs more blood sugar because now my blood sugar dropped precipitously too quickly. That's why you're hungry again. That's why if I eat this bread now, I'm gonna feel really, really good. Right, your body secretes hormones that make you feel good with carbohydrates, with sugar, say a drug, right? Not, not much different than cocaine, right, for rats. For studies show that the brain reacts very similarly, similarly with carbohydrates and, and sugar as it does with hard drugs. So I'm gonna feel good I'm gonna watch the game, I'm gonna feel good, I'm gonna lay down, probably take a nap, fall asleep. My body's gonna react as it should, getting rid of the blood sugar, right? Which is gonna mean a drop in blood sugar, which means when I wake up from, from my nap, I'm gonna be super, super hungry, right? When you're super, super hungry, your body craves things that are gonna make it nourished. What's up, Christian? So we don't, we don't wake up from that, from that comatose, that glucose comatose, 
craving broccoli and chicken breast, right? Our bodies think we need to survive, so you're gonna crave the most caloric foods possible. Your brain wants to wants to feed that craving. So, and that becomes a, a vicious cycle. You wake up, you eat more bread probably, or you eat some cereal or rice, whatever it is. So, to avoid that scenario, I'm gonna eat this bread, I'm, I'm telling you. I'm gonna kill it. But I'm gonna eat less of it because what I'm gonna do is a preemptive strike, right? I'm gonna have a protein shake before, right? So my new sponsor, and it's not hugely important, but my new sponsor, DotFit, has a great tasting protein shake. So what I did was I made a big, big ass blender of protein shake, right? My go-to, my go-to recipe, almonds, handful of almonds, right? Two scoops of, of sugar-free ice cream, scoop of peanut butter, and my leftover coffee, bulletproof coffee, maybe a little milk, a couple of ice cubes, blend it up. That is about 50 ounces of, of shake, right? So I'm gonna drink at least half of that right now. Right, what that's gonna do is now, when I eat the bread, I'm gonna eat the bread, I promise you. I'm gonna eat this bread, this Portuguese sweet bread. It's gonna get toe up. When my, my wife comes home with the kids, there's gonna be approximately half of this shit left. Maybe not half of it, maybe three fourths. But there's gonna, be, there's gonna be a lot less bread left when they come home. But I won't eat as much. And I won't eat, I won't eat several, several times of the bread because I'm gonna be satiated by the protein, right? I'm gonna be fuller, I'm gonna feel fuller because of the protein shake, right? Now, physiologically, what's gonna happen is the uptick in insulin is gonna be less because I've diluted the amount of sugar in my blood, simple, right? So if I give my body just sugar, right? All of, all of the incoming nutrients in my body are gonna be glucose. If I give my body a mixture of protein and carbs, now that's less. My blood is getting some glucose, some amino acids, right, from the protein. Now, my pancreas, my body, my brain, my evolutionary brain from thousands of years does not feel the need to react as strong to what I did to it. What that means is the insulin response is less, which means my body will be less aggressive in shuttling out or getting rid of the blood sugar, which means I won't be as hungry again in a half hour or an hour. So very simple. So you're gonna go out and have spaghetti or bread, you're gonna go to a party and, and you sense you might eat some sugar or just some junk food in general, preemptive strike. Preemptive strike, guys. Protein. Very simple. Protein shakes. Don't pretend, don't tell yourself, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be disciplined. I'm gonna have willpower. No. I mean, I mean, studies show that's limited anyway. It's limited. Create strategies. Have a plan. Have a, have a lifestyle around things that allow you to have some fun. Right? Enjoy some some good stuff, but be smart about it. So I, I, didn't, I didn't tell David I'm not going to have the bread. You know, I have willpower. I'm trying to get lean. I'm trying to get lean still, right? But I can still have bread. I worked out. I fasted all week. Last night was not ideal timing for me to have the bread, right? My Thursdays are a day off from working out. So I had not depleted my glycogen levels in my body. It was late, right? So I didn't have it last night, but I knew today. I was gonna have some, so I worked out. Did I, I, I'll include what I did. I did a, 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 I call it five, my new 5Ks. I don't run, I call them BTY 5Ks. So 5,000 reps of some combination. Um, so I did that today. It's about an hour and 20 minutes of, of co combination cardio and, and strength training. What's up, Don? Um, what's up, DT, sorry. So I got that workout in. I fasted until about four o'clock today. Right, just ketones and amino acids, all because I knew I wanted some of this bread. Portuguese bread, DT. 
Portuguese bread, right? So again, preemptive strike. I'm gonna drink this, probably all of it, right? Watching the, the, the Raptors Orlando game. Then I'm gonna hit the oven up, put the bread in, but I won't have nearly as much as I would have had had I not done that. And I won't wake up from my nap and want some more. I, I, I'll likely be fulfilled with one or two slices of this. And it's gonna be here for a few days, so I'm gonna have to redo that strategy probably tomorrow and Sunday. Work out fast, preemptive strike, and then more bread. All the time watching kind of where my weight's at when I'm doing that. But, you know, you don't need to, to be so extreme about stuff, guys. You know, if your approach is long-term, which it should be, if your approach is to be healthy permanently, then all these short-term things, I'm going to go no sugar for 30 days, I'm going to do a challenge, you know, an ab challenge. for No, just figure out what you can do forever and permanently change who you are, right? You ain't never seen me on Facebook talking about what, I, what I'm not eating anymore. Never. Go, go scroll back years. You ain't never seen me say what you should need ever again. You know, it's about being smart about it though, right? For me to pretend I'm not gonna have bread again is stupid, right? So I, so I, do, I, do, low, I do go low, lower carb, but I, I do some ketogenic principles, but I don't believe in going extreme with anything. I, I believe in, in, in approaching what you wanna be in life extremely extreme, but the tools, Right, you gotta be smart about it. You know, I always say, if you can't do it forever, then don't do it. If you can't, if it's a change you're making, you can't do it forever, why are you doing it? If it's important enough to change temporarily, to change forever. I'm gonna stop drinking soda for 30 days. Why, because soda's bad for you. Then stop permanently, or reduce it permanently. Right, what's 30 days gonna do? So, yeah, again, I have everything I wanna have. All the foods I like, I still have. I just, I just know how to do it now. So I can help anybody do it. You know, I'm 47 this year, and, and, and I'm as strong as I ever have been. Uh, I feel as fit as ever. I feel healthy. Um, you know, and I still enjoy my life. So, uh, yes, I'm gonna kill this bread, uh, but it's made possible because I'm smart about my preemptive strikes. So when you're going to have carbs, party, barbecue, or just a good friend, David, who just, who just chimed in, uh, brings you over some delicious bread, you know, make sure that you approach it smartly, right? Work out fast and then do a preemptive strike with some protein. All right, guys, I'm sitting there, I'm literally salivating as I'm, I'm, I'm watching this damn bread. <laughs> um, but have a good weekend. Happy Easter. Again, we're blessed. You know, Jesus died for our sins. We're blessed to be able to, to, to do things we do, right? We, we're able to work out. There are people in this world that wish they could exercise, guys. And we take it for granted. We do. And so we have to be smart about what we do, but we have to be gracious and we have to be appreciative of the ability to exercise, of the ability to work out, of the ability to choose what we eat and how we eat, right? And not, so be caught, not, not, not be so caught up in abundance, right? Because we're not meant to do that. We're meant to sacrifice sometimes. All right, guys? So have a great day. Happy Easter. I love you guys. Get some exercise tomorrow if you can. Um, and then, you know, if you have questions about anything, please feel free to reach out to me and I can help you design a strategy much like mine that allows you to continue getting leaner, continue getting stronger, continue fighting father time, and enjoying your life. All right, guys. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.